Hi students, it's been a really long time since I have seen you guys or you've heard from me, but um, I wanted to try some new technology and a new way of um, providing a lesson today. So I'm making this video to talk you guys through um, ethograms today. So an ethogram is a technique that we're gonna use today and tomorrow to create what's called an activity budget um, for uh, animals and observations that we're going to make about animals, specifically primates. So if you look at the top, I'm just going to kind of read through really quickly um, the information and quickly give you a demonstration on how to do an ethogram. So it says today we're going to conduct a practice ethogramming class. An ethogram is a catalog or inventory of behaviors or actions exhibited by an animal. When picking an animal to observe, you need to make sure that you're picking a live feed of the animal or an animal that you can actively observe or an, over an extended period of time. Do not pick a highlight video of an animal. Instead, you should be able to consistently view the animal for an extended period of time, at least 15 minutes. Next, record basic information about the animal you are observing. Name, date, time, location, etc. So, for example, the animal that um, I decided to select for our in-class example um, is elephants. So what I did was I literally opened up a Google tab, I typed in live view, camera view of elephants, and I found this page, which is um, the San Diego Zoo Safari Park. And this right now is a live elephant cam um, of the elephants. And if you scroll down, you could get information about all the elephants that you're observing. That's not as um, important to us really right now. Um, but what I can see is that there's actual elephants. The elephants are on screen for the most part, um, and that we can observe these elephants to do our live ethogram. So when I go back to the sheet, the next thing I'm gonna fill in is some of our information. So we are gonna view African elephants. So you guys will be typing this information just like I am um, kind of on your screen. Um, scientific name, if you don't know the scientific name, you can open up a second tab. Uh, scientific name of African elephant, it comes up. Remember the scientific name, there are two parts. So this says the African elephant Loxodonta is a genus comprising two living elephant species, the African bush elephant, and the smaller African forest elephant. We're gonna be observing today the bush elephant. So um, that means that their scientific name is Loxodonta. So I'm gonna type it in, Loxodonta africana. And remember with scientific names, they have to be italicized and or underlined, okay? The date or time, Right now it is April 14th and it is 5.54 a.m. So early in the morning. Um, the location that we're doing these um, observations, like I said, is the San Diego Zoo Safari Park. You can see that at the top. So I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna type in San Diego Zoo Safari Park. Okay, next description of habitat and weather. Okay, so if I'm looking at their habitat, I see that there's a lot of dirt, there's a lot of grasses um, on the ground. There is some plants in the background. So I'm going to go in, I'm gonna describe the habitat. Um, dirt and grasses on the ground plants in background. Um, I also see right here, if you can see, there's like a ball and there's a box. Um, those might contain food um, or some type of enrichment. So I would say large boxes, um, balls on the ground, they contain food items. Okay. I'll also go back and um, we can observe the weather. Now this might be difficult um, when you're doing an online activity, like we can't um, control the camera and where the camera is um, displaying. 
So it might be hard to see exactly what the weather is like. We could Google what is the weather like um, today in San Diego, but to keep things really simple, we will just say, um, make an observation that it's not rainy, it's not sunny. I don't see these plants back here blowing, so it's not windy. So we'll make those observations. Not rainy, not sunny, not windy, so on and so forth, okay? Okay, so we have our basic observations of our animal. Now I'm gonna go back to the top. We've already read the first two paragraphs. Now we're gonna read the next paragraph. It says, then you will observe the animal for five minutes while writing down all of the behaviors of that animal. You will record this list in the Google spreadsheet posted in Google Classroom. The behaviors in an ethogram should be defined to be as objective as possible, avoiding subjectivity and what's called anthropomorphism, which is assigning human characteristics to an animal. For example, a species may use a threat display, which in the ethogram is given a descriptive name such as chest beating display and not chest beating threat. This degree of objectivity is required because what looks like a threat might have a completely different function like courtship and the same patterns in a different species can have different functions like tail wagging and cats and dogs. Objectivity and clarity in the definitions of behaviors also improves reliability between different observers. Pretty much what this paragraph is saying is that we are gonna look at our live feed for about five minutes, okay? Now, what I want you guys to notice is the hard thing about these live feeds is the live feed just shifted. So someone is who is in control of the camera, not me, shifted the view from what we were current, what we were looking at over so that we're actively looking at an animal. You might not have any control when the camera shifts, but the biggest thing you wanna do when you're doing an ethogram is observe the same animal, one animal, to the best of your ability for an extended period of time. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna observe the elephant that is in front of us for about five minutes. Now I'm not gonna make you guys do this for five minutes um, just to save time, but what you're gonna do when you do this practice today and tomorrow is you're gonna look at the animal for five minutes and you're gonna write down every behavior that you see that animal doing. What you want to avoid is assigning human emotion to it. So I wouldn't say the elephant is eating and happy. I wouldn't say the elephant is playing or the elephant um, loves its baby or things like that because you don't know what the animal is actually feeling. So we want to, um, when we're making these observations, use as little emotion as possible. You're going to type these into your um, Google spreadsheet. One of the ones I already included was the one that says out of sight. If you are observing your animal and you are looking, like I said, at one animal the entire time, so if you have a group of animals, you have to focus in on that one animal and not lose sight of them. Please, please, please realize if the animal goes off camera, you just mark out of sight. We can't just guess what we think that animal is doing when it's not in view. So let's say I observed this elephant and I was doing this earlier and watching the elephants. Some of the behaviors I exhibited or saw that the animals were doing, I'm sorry, in our spreadsheet is eating, drinking. Um, I don't really like to say, uh, you could say walking or running. Um, I like to say locomotion, meaning that the animal is moving from one spot to another. Um, standing. Uh, Standing is a hard one because they could be standing or they could be sitting or lying down. So we'll just say resting. Um, another one is um, if they are um, going to the bathroom, pooping or peeing. Um, another one that we could say is interacting with peers. So in this case, I might not. Uh, know if it's a positive interaction or a negative interaction, but I see some type of interaction. If you're observing them, for example, and you're doing primates and you see that they're grooming, they're literally like picking bugs from one another, you could say grooming as a behavior um, or cleaning one another as a behavior. Um, 
Where it gets difficult is if you think that they're fighting or you think that they're playing when we don't really know exactly what they're doing and why they're doing it, or if they're mating, things like that, you have to be really careful with the way that you describe it. So I'm gonna go back, um, looking at our live view to see if there's anything else that I can pick up on these element elephants uh, before we start our ethogram. So I see that some of them, oops, sorry about that. Um, they're moving around, so I would call that locomotion. If I was looking at the one in the lower right down here, so they're moving. Once again, when you're doing this to the best of your ability, I would pick one of these ele elephants and I would look at that elephant and only that elephant um, for the extent of our ethogram, just to kind of um, hone in on one animal, one animal only. You never wanna like switch from animal to animal. So here's where it gets hard. You saw that the camera shifted right there. That is outside of our control. Um, so I know that this gets a little bit difficult. If this is what we were going to do when we went on our field trip. It would be much easier if you're like actually at the zoo while you're doing this. Um, but we're just going to get some practice to the best of our ability. Okay. Now going back to our sheet. So it says, once we have all of these behaviors, the next thing we're going to do is watch that animal for 10 minutes and record how many times that animal displays each type of behavior. To do this, we will set a timer, and every 30 seconds, we will tally what behavior that animal displays at exactly 30 seconds. This means if the animal was eating for 29 seconds and then stops and is just standing still at 30 seconds, you have to tally that the animal was standing, not eating, even though it was eating for a longer period of time. We will record this tally in the Google spreadsheet posted in Google Classroom. All right. So what that means is you are going to look at the animal. Once again, select which animal that you're going to look at. And you're going to go ahead and set a timer for 30 seconds. Every 30 seconds, that timer will go off. And at 30 seconds, you are going to determine what that animal is doing. You cannot, you cannot, you cannot, you cannot just start tallying all the different behaviors. It's going to get out of control. You're only going to tally at 30 seconds. So for example, if I'm watching these two elephants in front of me, I'm going to select the larger elephant to do my study on. Well, it seems like it's a large female elephant. Okay. If I'm watching her right now and I start my timer, ready, set, go, and my timer is going, I see that she's moving right now. I set my timer. My timer is going, my timer is going, my timer is going. So I'm gonna wait for my full 30 seconds. Stop. Now, I know that she was just moving. I saw her moving at the beginning of when I set my timer. However, when the 30 seconds went off, she was off camera. See, they just panned over. She was probably moving that whole time, but I'm not positive. So when I go to my ethogram, I'm going to have to say that for that time, she was out of sight. Instantly, as soon as you stop your other, your first 30 seconds, you have to start the next 30 second count. So what I actually like to do is have a running clock and just pay attention to the clock. And every 30 seconds, as soon as it hits 30 seconds or a minute or a minute 30, then I'm going to tally what behaviors my animal was doing for that period of time. Okay, you are going to do this for 10 minutes, 10 minutes. In other words, if I'm doing this for 10 minutes at every 30 seconds, you are going to have 20 data points at the end of this. Now, when you're getting to this part, the very last piece of information that you have to do, it says, finally, we are going to work out an activity budget in the form of a pie chart. So I typed in all my information. It says, now we're going to do our activity budget. We will use Google spreadsheet data to create a pie chart of our activity budget. This will provide us a visual representation of the behaviors of the animal. Make sure in your pie chart you have a detailed title and a key or list of the behaviors with clear percentages visible. You will paste your pie chart in the box below. So let's say for sanity's sake, 
we went in and of the 20 times, let's say she was out of sight, five times she was eating 10 times, she was drinking zero times, she was locomoting five times, zero times resting, zero times going to the bathroom, zero times interacting with their peers. Okay. This should be a total of, like I said, 20 times. The next thing you're gonna do is figure out percentages. In order to do that, you are gonna take the number of times that they, distribu that they distributed each behavior divided by the total times 100. So I picked these numbers to make it really, really, really easy, but um, five divided by 20 times 100 would be 25%. 10 divided by 20 is going to be 50%, 0 25%, 0%, 0, 0, 0, okay? Now, the next thing we're going to do is to create a pie chart. When we create our pie chart, the only categories we want are the description of the behavior and the percentage of behavior overall. To so click on both of these columns at the same time, I highlighted my first column. I'm going to push the control button on my keypad, and I'm gonna highlight the second column, okay? Then you're gonna go up here to insert chart. You're gonna click on it. Now, it's giving me a chart in a bar graph. We want a pie chart. So you're gonna go down here where it says column type, chart type, and we're gonna select a pie chart. This just gives us a nice visual of the percentages. You wanna make sure you have a detailed title. So if I click on the title, the only thing I'm going to change is I'm going to add the word elephant. Elephant percentage of behavior over 10 minutes. Okay. I have each one of my behaviors. It has the detailed percentages. It's nice and colored in. Okay. I'm going to copy my chart, go back to our sheets, and I'm going to paste the chart in. You don't have to link it to the spreadsheet if you don't want to. You can if you'd like. Now I have a very detailed view. I have my information on my African elephant, okay? Going down, I now have a detailed pie chart and now I can answer the conclusion questions. For the conclusion questions, what are two conclusions you can make about my animal? Well, one of the conclusions I think I would make is that it seems like the animal spends half of its time eating. So I would say the animal, spends the majority of its time eating. The other thing I would notice is when the animal is not eating, it is moving in its enclosure, okay? As we can see by the fact that it was locomoting or possibly out of sight, meaning it might have been moving around more. What are two additional questions you might have about your animal? Okay, well, one of my questions might be, what type of food is the animal eating? Just because it spends so much of its time eating. Okay, another question I might have is, why does the animal spend so much time eating? Is it only eating because it is the morning for you know for example like would it if i did the same evogram at 5 p.m in the evening would i see the same behaviors okay and then finally how do you think this animal would behave differently in the wild okay this is totally something that i want you guys to think about i want you to come up with do you think it's going to exhibit similar behaviors or different behaviors and why you could always google if you needed more help with this question. So what you guys are now gonna do, and I said for homework, is you guys are gonna choose an animal that you can observe for 15 minutes. It could be a pet, a neighbor's pet, a squirrel, a bird, Google an animal. Remember, if you do Google an animal, it has to be a live feed. You can't just go to YouTube and say like, highlight videos of a polar bear or something like that. It has to be an animal that you are gonna get a live feed of for the entire time that you're observing them, okay? San Diego Zoo has some really great live feeds of animals. If you go to their website, and if I go back, 
Um, here are some of the other animals that they have live feeds of. Baboons, penguins, polar bears, apes, koalas, butterflies, giraffes, tigers, owls, condors. And if you go back from there, I just typed in live animal cameras. So this, like I said, um, the San Diego Zoo has a good one. Um, the Smithsonian Zoo, this one usually has some really good ones. Um, lion, naked mole rat, sorry, giant panda, elephants. So I would stick to, if you're going to do webcams, the Smithsonian or the San Diego Zoo. Okay. Then when you go in, you're going to observe your animal, um, record all the information about it. You're going to use the same spreadsheet. You're going to write down your behaviors. And then you're going to do your ethogram where you're going to observe the animal for 10 minutes every 30 seconds. You're going to record the behavior that animal is doing. You're going to make your pie chart, post your pie chart in here, and answer your conclusion questions. If you need any help with this or help finding a video, please make a comment in the Google Classroom post. And I will do my best to answer your comments um, at the time. This is going to be our assignment for today. It's going to be due today. Tomorrow, I'm going to give you guys specific animals that I want you guys to observe, and you're going to do ethograms of primates tomorrow. Um, so you might not want to do a primate today. So I would stay away from gorillas or chimps or monkeys today. Maybe do um, a non-primate, like a lion or a polar bear, or you could do the elephants again if you want. It's up to you. Once again, hope this all makes sense. Um, we're going to do our ethograms today and tomorrow. And then Thursday and Friday this week, we're going to have our next unit test over all of our primate information. Let me know if you have any questions. And I hope to talk to you guys soon. Thanks.